Hi y'all. We're gonna be playing with new Shantikai today. So this is the new Wild Meadows collection and I got the Eye Quartet, I got the Apple Blossom Blush, the Apple Blossom Jeans, and the Boots with the Fur. And I picked up this Lip Chic in Carpathia. Now I've had a chance to use these like five or six times, like do a full face with them and I have some thoughts. I know I kick videos off with that a lot, but I don't even have to really force an epiphany on this one. A lot of times we're just sitting here trying to kind of like find something deeper than the makeup to talk about, but I do have an overall realization that we'll arrive at by the, at least by the end of this, if I can keep my trap shut that long, but we're just gonna apply, we're gonna apply, we're gonna apply. We're going to apply some makeup, most of it being Shantikai today, and I'm going to talk y'all through my process of getting my head around these products, like these new shades and formulas and whatnot, and we'll aim to answer the question of whether or not these are for you, but also a larger question of what is, what is going on with Shantikai right now? <laughs> <laughs> we'll aim to answer that question. So let's go ahead and jump in. Did I manage to mask my cynicism enough in that intro? Because I recorded an intro initially that just ended up being this like word vomit of all my final thoughts on it. And I was just like, no, 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 no. No one will watch you put the makeup on if you keep talking like that. Okay, so currently all I have on my face is my skincare and also the e.l.f. Woe Glow sunscreen. The sun is not out, Chanticleer. It's funny, I had to stop myself when I said Chanticleer because that's, I can never get through a Chanticleer, but it's like my Charlotte Tilbury. I have like names I supplant for all of the actual brand names. Like I can't say Charlotte Tilbury, like do an entire Charlotte Tilbury video without going, Charlotte Tilbury? And I can't get through anything talking about Natasha Denona without going to Tertia Denurner for whatever reason. And yeah, Chanticleer, Chanticleer I can never remember. I was like, Chanticleer? Rockadoodle? That movie's awful, but uh, yeah. Anyway, we're gonna start by just doing a little bit of complexion here. And when I say a little, I mean a little. I don't want to go in with like full foundation. And I didn't realize this, but I actually decluttered <laughs> I, I think I decluttered the Shantikai Foundation, the Future Skin. I don't really know why. I, I knew I wasn't gonna finish it, but I think I wanted to keep it around for the purposes of a video like this, but I didn't. We're gonna be using the Monica Blunder Blunder Cover, and I'm using it on that cute little IT Cosmetics brush that they gave me. Oh, I don't know, that video hasn't come out yet, but either way, IT Cosmetics gave me this, this brush. <laughs> Sponsorships are weird because they come out out of order, and I like almost never post a video out of order, but I really dig this brush. This is their little, what's it called, Heavenly Lux Complexion Perfection brush. And I know a double-ended brush can be kind of annoying, but my stuff isn't organized in the first place. So I'm using this in, oh no, I dropped it in, it's breaking. That's no good. That's no good, it's broken all the way up. Oh, well, we might have to like repot that at some point. Interesting. So anyway, this is the shade 2.25. Huh, I wonder how any, it's carpeted in here. I wonder how anything would fall with such force that it could break like that. Now, my Victoria Beckham lip gloss has fallen out of my purse enough times that it looks the opposite of luxurious now. <laughs> it's so beaten up. It looks like a neglected windshield, but this is confusing to me. Yeah, I just love this. I don't know if y'all follow, I think her name's Sarah James. She, uh, her Instagram handle is Whirl, W-H-O-O-R-L, and she always uses just this as like a very light complexion product. <sighs> I just always love her looks. It's a very effortless kind of French girl energy. I'm kind of chasing that feeling today. I'm up really high. That's better. Okay, so we're gonna start with the eyes. And I know that that's not typically me, but I wanted to show you all this. This is all eyeshadow. Almost all of that is eyeshadow of me taking this microfiber cloth, wetting it, and wiping this eyeshadow off and trying again because the colors in it are nice, but they don't make sense together. That's the place that I have arrived thus far. I, I can't really make heads or tails of how to wear them all together. And I think that there's also a part of me, like a very sick part of my head, that's in pursuit of the perfect quad. When 
I have absolutely no need for something to be concise. It's just kind of like a weird fascination that I have, the idea of something being that minimal and effective. And I've still just never found it. A six pan, absolutely. Like a Wayne Goss six pan, I think that that's a really ideal size for a palette, but a quad, I have just never found one that had all the answers for me. So these. I understand all of those words separately. I understand all of these colors separately. And I was initially quite enamored by this color story thinking, look, kind of like when you go to like a tasting menu or something, you know, sort of like sit down pre fee kind of dinner and you look at the menu and you're like, I don't love everything on there, but I'm gonna trust the chef that once it's all together, it's gonna make sense. And that's what I did with Shantikai here, because like you look at that and you're like, I would wear all those colors on my face at the same time. The problem is you don't really wanna wear them all on your eyes at the same time. And I think that this pink is the wrong texture. They have two, what they call like creamy satins. They have like a topper and then a shimmer. And these are like the creamy satins. And those are the ones that they, I don't really like. I like this beautiful matte brown and I love this beautiful shimmer brown and these are the ones I was kind of giving them the benefit of the doubt on but the gold is as I kind of was hoping it wouldn't be a little too gold like you can make it work but I feel like it kind of takes away from the other two and the pink is just weird you can't get enough opacity out of it to get the trueness of that color that's in the pan because it's so sheer and shiny and shimmery and so what ends up happening is you layer it on top of other things or you combine it with other things and it inevitably makes this together and it becomes a very cool toned pink with kind of a icy shift to it, which is a kind of a cheap looking color in my opinion. Like it looks kind of dated, but also it doesn't go with the collection at all. And you can say, well, you know, maybe it wasn't supposed to or like not everything. That's what Shantikai does. They release capsules. And so this was the blush that I picked and I loved that it's, you know, this really pretty kind of like bright pinky coral. I was excited for everything to kind of hinge on this temperature of pink. And you can already see in the pan that like this is a much bluer pink. And then when it gets on the eyes and it kind of combines with these other shades, it becomes a way bluer pink, like a much cooler, icier, almost purple pink, and they clash. And what happens, color theory, warmth comes towards you, coolness recedes from the eye. That's how we manipulate space when we're making art, right? You exaggerate those contrasts in order to create really believable illusions. And the illusion that is inadvertently created by the contrast of those two pinks when you try and use that pink on your eyes is that it makes your eyes look smaller. That's just art math. I wanna show it to you and I'll try, but it's not gonna be pretty, you know? So I think that that's kind of unfortunate. Like the way that this turns out is like not that pretty. I feel like I have to like make excuses for it because I always like to end up liking how I look when I get done, but I just don't think that that's gonna happen today because I understand all those words separately. I think what I'll do is I'll show you just the browns together this beautiful tan and this beautiful shimmery taupey tan. And you'll see, you know, the appeal of it because the formula on this mat is off the charts. Like I want, I want like an entire palette of just those. It's so, so lovely. This is an LH Cosmetics 303, probably too small of a brush for the job, but I'm gonna lay the color down with it and then I'll spread it out with something fluffy. I just don't wanna get it everywhere. Yeah. If they all felt like this color, and if they all looked this nice on, we'd be in business. And like, if it's just me and like me keeping these and wanting to get use out of this palette, I would literally just use these two colors. I don't think that really loving two colors in a $78 quad, let me say that again. I don't think that liking two out of four of the shades in a $78 quad is acceptable. $78. That's half the price of a full price Pat McGrath palette, more than half. And I don't think you're getting half of a Pat McGrath palette here. And I actually get a lot, I wanted to address this. I get a lot of comments from people when I do talk about Shantikai being disappointing because to me lately, they've been kind of a broken clock where a broken clock is still right twice a day. 
I feel like the Ray cheek and eye shade, this was Shantikai being right twice a day, <laughs> you know? And the rest of it has just been kind of inexplicable, but I get a lot of comments from people being like, I don't get it. I don't get why people spend money on Shantikai. I don't get the appeal of this preciousness. I don't understand the, like, the luxurious appeal that doesn't seem like luxury makeup to me. And, like, I kind of, I'm kind of starting to get that because there was definitely, I mean, I am very susceptible to precious color stories like this. And I also, I think it's because I came from the, you know, clean beauty background kind of thing. Like that was where I, I spent so much time early on in the you know beginning of my channel was just doing clean beauty and Shantikai definitely, you know, uses botanical ingredients and they do a lot of, uh, every single product that they put out has like a, a donation mission to some kind of wildlife benefit fund of some sort. And they do really, really great work in that respect. But I think that that has allowed me to I don't know, see them always in their own little space of being allowed to charge what they charge for philanthropic pros, uh, pro, pro, uh, purposes. And also because there's so little true luxury, or at least there used to be so little true luxury in the clean beauty space. And now we have Victoria Beckham Beauty, we have Westman Atelier, we have other things. And it just doesn't really stand alone anymore. Even RMS is kind of like up to their game in terms of it feeling not just like a precious clean beauty experience that's like special if you let those qualities appeal to you kind of thing, but now it is kind of elevating itself to compete in the luxurious experience space with a lot of other brands that aren't necessarily like, you know, self-identifying as clean. So it's lost its luster in that respect for me. So I get what they're saying. And I'm actually really like, this is the first collection where I'm just really starting to doubt the commitment to Sparkle Motion. You know, once you see it on, you'll be like, what are we doing? Like, I just, I couldn't stop asking myself, I'm like, Shantikai, what are we doing? Because I know that there are things that, you know, will always be great from them. There are, there are complexion products, which I do think are really, really lovely, with the exception of that, like, Real Skin Plus stick, which is just basically, like, kitchen makeup. I've heard that the mascara is phenomenal, you know what I mean? But they're all outrageously, outrageously expensive. So this is the, uh, the shimmery taupey shade. And, like... I feel like these are pure genius, but I'm just kind of wondering what the thought process was that made them choose that particular pink and not something that was like richer and more coral and going with the rest of the collection. Because if you're picking, because it's not just one shade of blush or one shade of lipstick in there, when you're choosing them, you do have options, but they are all in a spectrum of very saturated hot pink to very saturated coral. Nothing looks like that. Nothing looks like that icy, kind of like metallic 80s pink. And so I firmly don't get it. What's awesome about this taupe shade too is that even though when it builds, it does have a good amount of like, you know, satin, texture to it, when you use just a little bit of it, you can still kind of like push it up here and use it to just blur. And it doesn't add so much shimmer that it's like distorting your crease or something like that. And it's not so dark that it, you know, makes me look like I made a mistake basically. So, I mean, that's Honestly, that's beautiful. I want to take a little bit of it and put it underneath because, you know, it makes a really pretty kind of light colored smoky eye. The other thing about this is, yeah, I don't really know. I think that like this brown, even though it's not darker than dark skin, it's still really intensely pigmented. And so I think it'll show up, but I still think that like Shantikai needs to kind of get on the stick with their shade ranges. The Ray, cheek and eye shade, they kind of skirted the line there because there were people with dark skin who said that they use it as a highlighter and they love it and it still works as like an eye shade. And then people like me use it as a bronzer and it is kind of a universal color, but I feel like it's kind of like Daffy Duck, like that's, you can only do that trick once, you know? So 
the rest of it, it's like you kind of need to commit to inclusivity a little bit better because this is definitely not a, a, a color story that's friendly to many skin tones other than mine. So I do like that at least on my skin tone, I can take that creamy matte brown and just keep building it and building it. And you can get a believable shadow just from building it instead of having to reach for another color to get that dimension, you know? And it does, it gives me that kind of cool slept in eye look that I really enjoy. It's not quite as smoky as my typical bedroom eye, but it still does look very like worn in. And I, I really want to leave it there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to finish with like my cheeks and stuff so that we can see if it works just with this. And then I'll add the pink in at the end, the pink and the gold in, and you'll see what I mean. <laughs> Hopefully you'll see what I mean. I'm going to start with just the blush, but then I am going to go in with that Ray Cheek and Eye Shade just because I think that it's going to be a nice compliment to this look, but it's not part of this collection, obviously. But I would still always put bronzer on. So again, this is Apple Blossom, a beautiful blush, so pretty. And I wanted to look at this because I was like, I bet when I get this in my hands, it's gonna be microscopic. It's bigger, it's bigger than this one. I know it doesn't look like it, but I just kind of like put one pan on top of the other and it is actually a little bit bigger, but let me see, it is four grams and this is 2.5 grams. So Bliss, which is this other blush, which I'm also going to use that I was like, this is microscopic, this is an eyeshadow. It is actually bigger than that, which is nice. <laughs> and then the Radiant Blush from the Holiday Collection is actually five grams. It's even bigger, but like, yikes. Mine came broken and it just never, it just never recovered. Anyway, I think we're gonna try and keep it in this kind of bright, springy color palette today because that's the idea. But do you see how vibrant that is? And like, honestly, I really dig the heck out of that pink because even though it is a decision, right? That's a choice. <laughs> it's, it's like you either want that or you don't. There is something really beautiful and committed about it. And I love, I do actually really like that the pan is as large as it is because I actually feel like I can get a good amount of product and apply it more evenly. I do think that that's a thing, right? Like a pan has to be big enough to get a brush in so that you can apply it evenly. It does matter. That's something that I'm having issues with with that Surat palette that I got. I really love the colors of it, but they're in those like stripes. And it's actually hard to get your brush in just one of those and then get an even application on the skin. So when you have this many makeup items, you start getting entitled to complain. So here is Bliss, the tiniest thing ever, but it is very, very pretty. I really like this stuff. And it's great because it's really close to my complexion color. It's really, really pale. And so you see it kind of fills in the gaps where there was a little bit of contrast on my skin from that blush. But like we're talking about, what was that? Like a 50 something dollar blush, right? Oh, screw off. It is a $75 blush. So like, you know, being like, well, I'm gonna use this Shantikai blush to balance out this Shantikai blush $150 later. Like, no, that's the thing. I. Okay, this was the thought that I was trying to hold back from saying. I'm gonna go in with the, you know, the cheek and eye shade here while I talk about this, but I feel like that's the risk you run as a brand like Shantikai when you are doing capsules and you're charging as much for them as they do, you really run the risk on, well, you really just like ride a very fine line of is this worth it? Is this worth the risk, the financial risk that this doesn't become my favorite item of makeup? Because that's what they're doing. Like they're really putting the stakes high saying like, this is worth your money because this is the only thing that you're going to need. Look how precious and beautiful and concise and decided upon and edited down, you know, how curated this is. And like, that's the dream, especially for like a minimalist makeup user is like, I'm going to pay for luxury and I'm not just going to get luxury as an experience. I'm going to get something that like solves a problem, excites me, makes my life easier, puts itself on for me. And I 
frankly, have had to think too hard about their releases and putting them on my face over the last, you know, few releases to really justify the, the fact that not only they're expensive, but they seem to be jumping right on that inflation bandwagon where they're just like, well, everything's gonna get two to four dollars more expensive. Shantika, y'all were doing fine. I guarantee you, you were doing fine. Like, this packaging, I guess I was kind of enamored by it when it first came out, but I was like more enamored just by the color story. But like, this is definitely giving stock photos that your local allergy clinic might use on one of their signs. Like, hey, come on in for your allergy shots. It's that time of the year. Like, does it need to be this literal? This thing is like $52 now for a lip chic. Like, no. No, 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 no. That's, stop jacking up your prices. Either way, I'm gonna put a little bit more of that pink blush on because I feel like we can, we can get away with that. And here's the thing. I get two different, you know, opinions in my comments when a line like this is so polarizing. I get people saying, I cannot believe that anybody finds this appealing. That's a wackadoodle amount of money and you know, et cetera. We, we, we talked about that, but then there are the people who say, I bought this and I love it. And for those people, like, I don't want to take that away from you. You know, like that's, that's fantastic. I want you to like what you buy because this was appealing to me too. So I never want to be like, you know, Khaki disapproves of this. And this was like, you know, and then you have some kind of like, I don't know, negative feeling about it when you use it, just knowing in the back of your head that like it didn't get my stamp of approval for some reason. I don't know, but the thing is, this is for someone and this does appeal to people, you know, on a lot of different levels. It's just something where it's like when I have this thing called context collapse on my channel, context collapse basically means that like I can have all, all of my kind of opinions and you know what I means in the world, but like there's a really good chance that the majority of people watching this aren't gonna know what I mean. They're going to, you know, receive it from wherever they are. And that's not where I am kind of thing. And so that means that like you can't control who hears your messaging. And so you have to kind of over explain yourself and recontextualize things for a lot of different audiences because you can't control who your audience is kind of thing. So dealing with context collapse, I have to couch this in the caveat that like, I would not spend your splurge dollars on something like this because it isn't perfect. And that's kind of my standpoint is something like this, it, it has to rise to the level of being really perfect. And that's where my standards are. But I don't want to take the enjoyment away from the people who like it, you know? All right, I have here this illuminating powder, Lotus Perfect Blur Glow Powder. This is from their holiday collection. And I'm just gonna use that to, again, blur. And it's pretty. It has a little more glow to it than I would like. And the thing that I didn't like about this collection was just that everything was a little bit too much like a highlighter. It was like they started with highlighter and then they were like, let's make a highlighter that's kind of like a blush. And then they were like, let's make a highlighter that's kind of like a powder, you know? But I feel like then they also put a highlighter out and like, okay guys. I use a little bit of the highlighter from that collection as well in the shade Lum, 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 there was no shade. Nope, Lotus Radiance Highlighter. I tried to pronounce the French name, the name in French, but uh, it was upside down and I don't, I don't speak French very well, so I gave up. All right. Now we're gonna put on this lipstick and you're gonna see why, you're just gonna see why I feel the way that I feel. So this is Carpathia. I chose it because it looks like a really gorgeous coral. And it is a really gorgeous coral. It's not as coral as one of the shades. It's not as pink as one of the shades. It's kind of in the middle. And I love the lip chic formula. And so I was thinking it was gonna work nicely. And I have some lip cheeks that I really like. I do, but this one's a little bit loud. For spring? Fluorescent watermelon for spring? I don't know. We're just gonna leave that there. It's, I don't want to offend anyone here, 
but we all know the like cute little old lady who can really pull off a coral lip like this, you know? I'm from the South and there are so many cute little old ladies who pull off an amazing coral like this and it like sets off their whole look. But for me, it just looks a little bit weird, okay? It just looks a little bit weird. It's not even a bad color in my complexion. It's just such a choice with everything else. So I'm gonna let it just kind of chill and maybe I'll get used to looking at it kind of thing. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. And I, I do want to like figure out the look to make it work. But I think that that's the main thing that like these Shantikai capsules are supposed to do is they're supposed to literally like sell you a capsule of the things that make it work. And it does it. It does it. Now is the time for us to ruin the way that this looks. And that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to take my finger in this pink and I'm gonna try and get as much opacity from it as I can because the whole point to me is for the pink to be visible as pink. Otherwise it just glows kind of blue because it's got that like cool like icy shift on it and I just think that it's terrible looking. So the best thing that you can do is like try to get more pink out of it but you can see it's not by like relative standards pink. It's kind of like lavender. And you take that cool lavender and you smash it right up against that now like glowing fluorescent watermelon color that's even starker in contrast because it's so rich and warm. We are really tiptoeing confidently, if you can do such a thing, into clown territory, okay? And then, Again, from a color theory standpoint, you're looking at something that is pink in the pan, yes, but when it's purple, lilac on the eyelids, once it actually com you know, comes down to it, brass tacks, the local color ends up being lavender. And then you look at that gold that they've put in the, in the palette, it's kind of yellow yellow and purple are opposites on the color wheel and so you're just going to end up with mud. So let's make some mud, shall we? It's got to be better than what we're doing right now. So I'm going to take a little bit of that and go like inner corner and along the lash line a little. Like what are we doing? What was the plan? I really feel like they took the two brown shades and then they were like, okay, now let's put something in there that's like a pop of springtime. And that was all they did. I feel like that's kind of what's happened lately is so half-baked. You know, I was talking to Hannah specifically, Hannah Louise Poston, specifically about their lip crystal that they came out with the holiday collection, which was the one thing that I did end up decluttering because the glitter in it came off of my teeth and went crunch, 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 as we talked about at length. She said that it just doesn't bother her. You know, and like, fantastic. I think that there are a lot of people that like enjoyed it and that the crunch, crunch, crunch doesn't bother them. I'm very, very conscious of it. But I do feel like Shantikai needed to do more work up front to make sure that that didn't happen at all, regardless of what your opinion of the effect of that is. And I feel like that's very much what happened here is like, I'm looking at this going, I don't feel like anybody put all of these items on one face at one time and looked at it with a critical eye because it doesn't make sense. They don't go together. <laughs> they look weird and I look dated and it's just, it's odd. It's not that I look old, it's that I look dated and it's that metallic weird pink on my eyes with the gold and the coral lip. I don't know. All this makes me want to do is like run towards the nearest Hindash palette or color fluid. It makes me want to just go find like safe harbor in colors that I understand and know are going to look good on my skin that aren't trying to be 
decided for me and confusing on purpose. <laughs> like, I want a regular painter's palette of colors that I have control over, and I just want to get out of this reality. <laughs> it's, it's hard. It's hard for somebody who does a lot of makeup all the time to, like, sit there and literally just be like, this is the limited palette I have to work with, and I can't make it work. I can't make it work. So, the thing that I have been doing to try to make this work is just bringing the blush color into my eye look because it, you just, you gotta do something. You gotta do something. So I'm gonna take that coral and I mean, I don't know. 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 I usually like a pink sparkly eye, but this is just doing nightmarish things on my face. Oh no. I thought that that was going to work. Mm -hmm. No, I, I hate it. I feel very acutely aware of what it looks like. I think that when I do my makeup in private, I'm just like, I can probably like, you know, we'll do it live. It'll be fine. We're doing it live and it's not fine. Okay, I don't know. I'm gonna take some of <laughs> this cheek and eye shade, cause that's what it's for. And just kind of warm everything up a little bit because it's so darn cool. I hate it. I'm gonna do my brows and my eyeliner and my mascara and I don't really know what we'll talk about when we come back. Maybe something philosophical because I feel like I've already laid it all out but I... The thing is I want to fix this so bad but I want this to be the thumbnail so we're staying in clown mode. <laughs> <sighs> know what my final thoughts are. I'm angry because I have bought into the Shantikai fantasy for so long and I have tested their products. I have spent probably thousands of dollars of my own money. I've never once, shocking I know, based on my reputation with Shantikai, I've never once received PR from them and for all of that, from a, like a lifetime value standpoint, I am a very valuable customer. I'm a valued customer. I am a loyal customer. And this is so disappointing. It's just clowny. Like they just didn't think. I, like pink for spring, florals for spring. <laughs> Groundbreaking! It's te it's really, really ugly. I, I, okay, there are very few times, this is why I'm mainly mad. There are very few times where I am doing my makeup and I hit a crossroads that instead of making me feel like, okay, I have taken a zig when I should have zagged and I just need to kind of bring it back on the rails. This is on the level of like that RMS Hidden Desire palette from back in like end of 2019 where I feel like, I'm not in on the joke, you know? I'm like, this makes me feel like I'm not good at doing makeup because when I put it on with the best of intentions, it looks so bad. I'm gonna take a thumbnail and I'm gonna wipe this 
off because I just, I mean, at least the lip, like we gotta do something. We gotta do something to bring this back on the rails, okay? All right, I spared you me posing at the camera. Get this off of me. Okay, we're gonna do a little color theory analysis here. The fact that my cheeks are so like red almost on me, you know, pinky red, you know, leaning towards a warm, a kind of orangey red, you know, peach. And then my eyeballs, like I said, it makes my eyes look smaller because by contrast, that pink is so cool. We need something warm. Warmth is going to pull that forward. And you don't really, I don't really want to go for like orange because it's going to pull too much orange out of this. But I do think that we could get away with something like a gold brown or even just a regular gold. But I also want to counterbalance that purple. I wonder if just putting that yellow gold all over my eyes would help, you know? Maybe we just go with that taupe color again. And then, by the way, a lot of this has to do with me doing hair back in the day. Cause it's like, you're always thinking not just about the color you're putting on, but what the color like is going to do on the hair that's receiving it because that hair is never like white. You know what I mean? It's never just like a blank piece of paper or like a blank canvas. It already has some history to it. It already has an identity to it. So you always have to like take that into consideration. And so that's kind of the same thought process here. So I'm going to try this very yellowy gold. It's like a soft Easter egg yellow. That is doable. I think we can pull it back on the rails on the eyes by counterbalancing that purple with that gold. And it just ends up being kind of a neutral pearl color as far as the actual local color of it. Yeah. But like we pretty much had to wipe off and completely cover up the place that was that god awful pink. And I'm just using a little more of the taupe to balance that out. I'm covering up a little bit of my eyeliner though. I'm gonna have to put a little more on. So three out of four ain't bad, right? You know, I could use that gold and that would be fine. That pink is just such an odd choice. Odd being like a compliment, like that's being nice about it. Even though it's a pretty eye look now, it's still not, I don't think like, you know, unique enough to my collection to warrant spending $78 on a quad. This is Carve, no it's not. This is Thorn from Hindash that I use as my eyeliner. It is the best like liquid eyeliner effect, especially being like a deep brown, deep warm brown instead of black. Uh, for people who have kind of inconsistent eyelid texture because it's so smooth. It doesn't ever catch on anything. I always have trouble with pencils kind of getting an even looking eyeliner situation because this eye is like a different like texture and it like dips in in spots and this just makes it so I can just paint it right on. You'd never know. And I think that now, you know, it's safe to kind of go in with more blush because I just kind of neutralized the eyes, neutralized them in shade and also neutralized them as a threat. <laughs> because they were a threat to this look. And interestingly enough, the place where I did put some of the blush into the eye look up here now looks more at home because I took away that blue pink. Come on. There we go. I want some, I want some blush on the tip of my nose. There we go. And what are we gonna do on the lips here? We're gonna do a little bit more analysis here because you have to think about where you wanna pull from on the rest of your face and like whether you wanna change the color of your lips or whether you just want to, you know, keep it clear. Because right now, the color of my lips looks really good with this look. And so I'm not really sure I have anything to solve for. You know, I could go for something like this Rare Beauty and that's gonna give me something kind of matte. And I don't really want that. It's a little bit too beige. I could go for like this, which is 
the Natasha Denona My Dream, which is gonna give me kind of like a blanked out neutralized lip. But I feel like that's almost gonna kind of mute everything down too much because the eyes are already kind of, it was muted as a problem solver, not necessarily as like a conscious decision. It wouldn't have been my first choice to kind of mute my eyelids down like that. And so I think that the answer is really just a clear gloss. And I'm gonna use this one that I just got from Prados. Nice clear gloss. Cause I just don't really want any more moving parts in this look, you know? I feel like we conquered whatever it's trying to do. I don't want to take any more risks. I don't like feeling like that. I don't feel like I can't take risks and experiment with my makeup because, you know, it kind of is already working against me so much. So I'm gonna spritz here. Something cool that happens because like my hair is relatively obedient, you know? It's like when I blow it out, it kind of straightens itself out. And then I've got a little bit of like product in there is when I hit my makeup look with a finishing spray, it gets like this part of my hair a little bit wet and then kind of like roughens up the texture. I'm a fan of that. Tula! Too legit to quit. Mmm. Mmm. Signature glow. Mmm. Still my fave. Bottom line, do I recommend this collection? No. It made my life so much harder. That doesn't mean that it's not for anybody because I think that each of these items individually would work for someone. The point is, A, they're trying to make a capsule collection. And this, to me, is not a capsule collection. These colors don't work together. I'm being very emphatic about this, but like, this is my thing. I, I'm kind of a color theory queen, and like, these colors don't work together. This is lovely. This makes me want to figure it out you know, figure out how to make it work on me because it's quite a committed shade that isn't particularly bad on my skin, but it's like, I just want to figure out how to make it work because this isn't it. We figured out what doesn't work. And then this palette, I just, I feel like no one is going to be satisfied by the addition of this pink because it shifts blue. So it doesn't matter what your natural coloring is necessarily. The fact that like, you think you're getting a pink and you're actually getting a sheer uh, metallic pink shift icy lavender, it's going to, by virtue of the fact that that is a cool tone, it's going to shrink the way that your eyes look. Like it's going to recede from the eye. And if you're cool toned enough that that's something that works on you, possibly, but I think that it's still misleading because you've got this warm gold and these neutral tones and then you have this bright pink and the way that they purport it to be online is just, you know, this kind of nice spring color story. I think that the pink itself is a trap. It's like a booby trap, you know? I just think that it is, especially for being a quarter of this, so $78, that's like almost $20 for that stupid little eyeshadow right there. Like, no, no, it's not good. It's not a good decision that they made. And I feel like, again, I have the right at this point to be frustrated. Not just like, oh, this isn't for me, but frustrated because I feel like this is almost misleading in the sense of like what they present to be a capsule collection. And it frankly looks incredibly clownish when you put it all on together. So I think that that's my, you know, overarching closing thought. I used to buy Shantikai because it was fascinating and appealing to me specifically as a makeup user. Now I think I'm probably, if I buy more Shantikai in the future, it's going to be because I think it's valuable to review. It's like a valuable thing to give my two cents on, but I, it has lost its allure to me as just a makeup consumer because I feel like they it's been a long time since they've gotten it right. Once again, ensuring the fact that I will never be on their PR list. <laughs> Not if I keep making YouTube shorts about how terrible their glitter lipstick is, but I do feel like we brought something together here, something back on the rails, and even though that blush is $75, and I don't think that it's worth it, I will continue using it. And even though that eyeshadow quad is $78, and I don't recommend it, I will continue using the browns in there. And I am determined to at some point make that lipstick work to do something. That is where I leave you on this Shantikai review today. I hope y'all enjoyed this. If you did, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up or you can give it a thumbs down if that's your truth. It all counts as engagement in the algorithm, so I appreciate you either way. If 
you made it all the way to the end of this video and you enjoyed it and I wasn't like so salty that I, you have a bad taste in your mouth at this point. Most of them aren't this salty, so definitely consider subscribing while you're here because most of the time, it's just it's just a lot of fun. Although I am funny when I'm salty, I think. Anyway, I will throw a video up, up here that I think that you're going to enjoy. And I love y'all. I wanna thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Chanticleer!